You can hear me all right? Yep, I can hear you. <clears throat> okay, go for it. Good to go. How's it going? It's all right. It's not too bad. It's about two in the afternoon in a rainy and gray Dublin, so it's normal stuff. <clears throat> That's cool. It's um eight in the morning here, so quite a time oh, difference. Sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Oh no, you're fine. Um, so let's go ahead and start off with um, how did you get the idea for this album? What do you mean the idea? Where did the idea come from? Like, how did it kind of start when you were creating the album? How it ends? <clears throat> well, I mean, it's the same, really, as any. Um, other album you just start to <clears throat> I mean Primordial is not a professional band so we don't really have to do anything and then <clears throat> usually after a couple of years between albums you get the feeling like okay it's about time it's about time we start to um, write songs start to <clears throat> get moving <clears throat> and so we started really last September in earnest at writing songs for the album and um, well here we are <clears throat> okay so can you tell us about the music video victory has a thousand fathers to feed as an orphan is there any like significant <clears throat> well we have a very good friend called dave swift he runs like a sort of living history reenactment group called Kiev. um and he helped us with the exile amongst the ruins video uh, from the last album and basically we talked to dave about um <clears throat> setting um, I have another friend, um, Fergal Flannery, uh, another Irish guy, and together with Killian, the guy who filmed it, we basically picked a couple of deserted ruins um, <clears throat> and we framed the video to be like set in about 1630, 1640. And Dave um, is a sort of expert on this period of history. So basically he just shows up <clears throat> with his van full of all of these costumes and all this stuff and um we just sort of you know um <clears throat> created a loose timeline put on all the stuff and then just sort of marauded around this eighth century abbey um it's it's you know it's great it's um the idea is it's kind of like um i suppose a sort of form of living history in a sense you know and dave is an sort of expert at that so we just sort of deign to his knowledge on the subject okay so that must have been pretty interesting to have to pick out <clears throat> and stuff like that and kind of do a reenactment type of music video. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's <clears throat> it's um like I said, it's his area of ex expertise, and um, it sort of fit in with the the victories of Thousand Fathers. The song has a sort of very Irish feel to it. It's got some Irish traditional elements running through the music, and it sort of was suggested itself. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. It suggested itself for this kind of video, which was set, like I said, it's like set in 1630, 1640. We're supposed to be three Irish regiment soldiers who are fleeing a battle to take refuge in this old um, abbey. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's how it worked out. Okay. Did you have a hard time finding the ruins or do you guys have like a lot of those over there kind of? Or? Yeah, Ireland's full of them. <clears throat> and my friend Fergal, who took the drone footage and... Um, he, he just, me and him during lockdown, but especially him, um, we took to going and visiting all these kind of small places around Ireland. And so he's a kind of, I suppose we'd call him a sort of an expert on that as well. <clears throat> okay, well, that's pretty cool. I, I saw the music video and I thought it was really neat. So I kind of wanted to get more information. <clears throat> it's all right. Do you guys have any um, tours planned for North America? Um, well, we're playing Maryland Death Fest next year. And then we're supposed to play like eight gigs in the US after that. It's not announced yet. Um, so it's in the process, in the planning. <clears throat> There's a lot of bureaucracy, mm -hmm. a lot of applications, a lot of difficult and kind of, you know, difficult things to work your way through to get to that moment. But um, yeah, that's, it's taken a long time. It's like I said, see, Promoter is not a professional band. Um, and the problem is that of course, you know, families, responsibilities, work, jobs, all the, all the, you know, the nuts and bolts of life <clears throat> get in the way of being able to just tour America for generally, you know, less than minimum wage conditions 
Like you can't just go there and come back and have, you know, everybody go, well, you know, how do we pay the rent this month? It wasn't, wasn't uh, you can't, you know. Um, <clears throat> so that's why a lot of European bands don't go to America. It's also the visa thing. It's like for one band, it's like three or four thousand euro on top of flights and everything else. So if you, once you print merch flights and your visa, you're about, you could be 10 or 12 or 14 thousand dollars down on your first show. So if you've ever seen a European band playing to like 63 people or 91 people, they're losing money. Like, so I, I, at least as I do the math, <clears throat> any less than about, you know, 175, 200 people um, and, you know, you're losing money. So, so, but of course you have to go to America to build an audience. So it's a kind of catch 22 of a situation, but yeah, hopefully finally we're going to come back. It's been a while. Um, maybe ten, in nine, ten years. Or so. <clears throat> yeah, it'd be nice to, I guess, come back. But I can definitely understand where you're coming from, especially traveling nowadays. It feels like travel's kind of increased since COVID. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, certainly has. They don't want you traveling, that's for sure. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's also just price gouging, you know. I mean, we're in an energy crisis, and energy companies are making more money than ever. Um, look, we're, 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 we've moved into a kind of form of, emergency economy uh, where I think that um, many of the benefactors, financial benefactors of these situations have no interest in things returning to normal. So I don't think we're going to see travel become easier. Um, but I think it'll only get harder in the years ahead. So, <clears throat> you know, got to get this tour in while you can, you know. Yeah, for sure. So what can fans expect to hear on the new album? Say that again. What can fans expect to hear on the new album? Oh, just the same old shit, you know. <laughs> no, um, <clears throat> no, I mean, look, it's it's primordial style. It's the same trench we've been digging and firing out of for 30 years. It's not drastically different to things that went before. If you love the band before, I think you will love it. I think it's good. It's full of energy and passion and aggression and anger and defiance and tragedy and all this kind of stuff um, in our in our particular style. If you thought we were boring before, you're still going to think we're boring. So, <clears throat> you know. So, no, I, that's also a good thing, too, though, because, you know, if you have fans <clears throat> been with you for the beginning, it's still the same. Nothing has changed. Like, you know what to expect. <clears throat> well, uh, I mean, it's not that, it's not quite like nothing has changed. I mean, the thing about it is, is like no one sounds like Primordial. So we've carved our own particular niche. So as far as I'm concerned, we can we can sit in our trench if we want to. Um, it's not like we're busy changing styles or genres and that we don't have an embarrassing electronic phase or we never, you know, dressed up in PVC or we never did this or that the other. At least I don't think we did. <laughs> um, no, I mean, look, it's just primordial stuff. It's um, the main thing for me is um, that it has uh, passion and that it has dedication and that it sounds like you mean it. Um, I don't care if a song on the new album sounds quite like a song from the first album. Mm -hmm. I quite admire orthodoxy. I'm, I mean, when it comes to like black metal, I'm, I'm very happy to say my views and opinions haven't progressed uh, one single inch since 1991, 1990. Um, I don't give a shit about introducing new elements or progressing or evolving, even if you want. It's, um, it is just is what it is. It's so, if the song has, a, um, we don't really think about it too hard or second guess it or get too caught you know, in the weeds of um, <clears throat> whatever it is that we're doing. Some of it has to just be instinctual. So, Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's pretty cool. It just is what it is. Yeah. And if you liked it before, I honestly think people will love it. If you didn't like it before, well, that's okay. Move along to the next, um, you know, whatever it is. So I have to ask, do you have a favorite song on the album? No, not really. I mean, um, <clears throat> favorite songs, I don't really have favorite songs, so to say, but there are songs that in the fullness of time from playing live, you become more attached to because you see the response from people. Sometimes it's difficult to know which ones are like the home runs um, that really connect with people. And it takes a while for you to figure that out. And the only way to figure that out is really by playing live. So seeing as we've only just really played one warm-up gig so far with new songs, it's hard to say. I really like the opener. I like Pilgrimage to the World's End. Um, <clears throat> I like All Against All. I like, all, you know, my, I like all of it. I mean, there would be no point in making it <laughs> otherwise, but 
Um, it's good. It'll take a while. In two or three years, um, uh, I'll more have my favorites, you know. <clears throat> okay, so it kind of just depends on how the fans react and you kind of feed off of that. Um, yeah, you, yes and no. You know, ask me during the next lockdown and I'll tell you which ones are my favorite. Oh, not another lockdown. <laughs> oh, the, the Pandora's box has been opened, mark my words. Anyway, that's, that's a whole different interview. <laughs> Did you face any sort of challenges while you were recording the album? Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, you know, uh, when you're recording an album, we, we do everything old fashioned way. We rehearse together in a room. We don't trade files. It's not allowed. We don't we don't rehearse remotely. We have to be in the room together, arguing, fighting, con con constructing something. Um, and then you book a proper studio. No auto tune, no tempo maps, no metronome, no cutting, pasting, nothing. You play in the room, you do all as much as you can live, sing in day, day and a half, don't fuck around, first takes. Um, make uh, we try and make an album as close to as maybe it was made in 1974 or 1984 with no money as we possibly as we can. So we don't we try not to use technology too much. Of course, you can't escape using Pro Tools and stuff, but. Um, we don't really use any trickery um, and you rely on your instinct. We don't finish songs off completely in rehearsal. <clears throat> you have to rely that on the spot you're going to make the right decision with uh, whether a, a guitar lead goes one way or the other or whether the vocal goes one way or the other. Um, and you just trust in your instinct as a musician. And so that's the that's the you know, that's the fun part. So we're not very well prepared, but that seems to work. So. Yeah. I think it's really cool to, you know, be in the same room and kind of do it because nowadays you have people sending files back and forth. Doing it. <clears throat> They're just, it's that human aspect of being all together in a room. Well, that's the reason we st I started a band was to be in a room with other people, whether that was rehearsing or, or playing a gig or a festival or something. I didn't start it to be this, an avatar on the bottom of a screen. If, if, if this was the future of making music, I would, you know, I would know. I, I, honestly, I would not make any more heavy metal. It'd be, right. It's over. It's a done deal. Um, there's no point. It's um, what do you do? You know, you might as well just have, I can just be an avatar here on the screen and you can uh, get your answers from chat GPT and, uh, you know, some sound module can recreate my voice and say what it thinks I would say in an interview, which is probably going to happen within the next two or three years. So, um, no, everything, I, I think we have to, I think I, even just as a culture, as a society, we have to push back against the idea that's being forced upon us, which is that we should live, work, and relate to each other remotely. I think it's um, entirely negative for a social species like human beings, um, and that we shouldn't accept the idea that, well, you, maybe you shouldn't travel and go to that festival. Maybe you should watch it on your Oculus Rift glasses and sit atrophying on your couch. I think people need to start pushing back against and um, the encouragement to work remotely because it only leads to more screen time, which equals more unhappiness and more negativity and more tribalism. That's my opinion. I'm there with you. I'm old school. I'd rather go to a show physically than watch it through an Oculus. Of course. Of course. Yeah. And that, you know, we we, we were propagandized, whatever, whatever the word, word is, for two and a half years to not want to be in a room with other people because it was, you know, it's prep for a form of the encouragement to um, work and live remotely. So it's... um. I think it's it's for so like I said for a social species social animal like human beings are it's um it's antithetical to uh, what our um, societal and historical cultural um, <clears throat> you know um, what do you want to say innate desires are or whatever anyway blah 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 who okay, cares so well I'm just a singer in a heavy metal band you know don't take me don't take my <laughs> my proclaim my proclamations about society and culture too seriously. <laughs> Well, it's good to have opinions about stuff. It starts conversations, I think. Oh, we, I certainly uh, have. I certainly have those. <laughs> <laughs> so, why did you choose the title "How It Ends"? Um, in order to be, it's a cryptic. You know, it's like it's not. It, some people have said, "Is it about the band?" Hey, it could be. I mean, I could go outside and be struck by lightning, and you never know, right? Um, no, yeah, you know, it's. I, the title really refers to. Um, <clears throat> The album is kind of, if To the Nameless Dead is about the movement of borders and nations and states 
and what happened to you know languages and peoples within those borders and states who were eclipsed um, in the great you know sort of shake up of maybe the 19th and 18th centuries we come to the end of the sort of medieval period into the industrial age um, the new album is kind of about the revolutionaries within those within the, you know who were resisting colonialism or empire who were they were, they were like doomed revolutionaries doomed the doomed um, beauty of the pursuit of liberty is sort of the idea so I'm asking is this how it always ends at the end of a barrel of a gun um, trying to claim your liberty, which is the most important word in English language or in any language. And the pursuit of liberty is what's, you know, is at the heart of our um, consciousness. So that's what I'm asking. And I I think the, and I'm asking a lot of questions. And I think the main question is, um, you know, who are the doomed liberal revolutionaries right now? Who is pushing against the system of encroaching authoritarianism? But it's not really a modern, again, I'm using a sort of, historical context to have purchase in the modern world so to speak so i'm looking at um you know the 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 kind of people who gave their young lives to resist empire in the 19th century and the late 18th century or up to the first world war um because that the image of the man that behind you there is like from 1920s so yeah that's kind of that's the theme it's a sort of album for the downtrodden if you want to quote johnny cash yeah well, I hope it doesn't end with a lightning strike, but I like that you can kind of have different, um, you know, interpretations of the album title. Sure. I mean, that's, that's, Primordial is open to interpretation and that should be the idea that I'm speaking to, you know, I, in my own way to the, uh, speaking to the historical movement of working class people resisting empire or, you know, the, the financial power brokering of elites should resonate with people from Peru to Palestine, to Belarus, to Finland, to Ireland, to, um, you know, there's all these, there's, these movements are within every country. So this, like I said, this really is a sort of like, a, um, yeah, it's, I'm not gonna say working class album. But there's definitely an element, there's definitely some something from, um, something of that within it, the doomed revolutionary, so to speak, you know. I have one more question for you here. Okay. Is there a that you'd like to tell your fans about the album or just about the band in general? No, not really. I mean, like I said, if, if you loved the band before, I hope, you know, you aren't disappointed with the record. I don't think you will be if you didn't like us before. Well, you know, that's okay. <laughs> Damn, there's, there's so much music out there. No, it's, I mean, look, it's primordial 30 odd years of making of like I said, digging our own trench without compromise, and so you know that we just keep rolling for however many years are left um, for us for everything, um, and um, you know try and make the best out of whatever that is, you know. So um, it's in you know it's it's interesting. The main body of our career is in the past. The main body of our youth is in the past, um, and so it's um, it's a it's a complicated um, thing to navigate the last few chapters. But I'd like to think that this, as album number ten, is a good way to go out, if that's so. But I, I don't feel like that yet. But we'll see. Well, I hope you have many more years. <laughs> ah, we'll see. If I'm struck <laughs> by lightning and you're the last person I speak to, well, okay, I have no regrets then. Well, I hope that's not the case. (laughs) All right. All right. Thank you for taking the time to do this interview. I hope you have a good afternoon. You too. Take it easy now. All right. Bye-bye.